Well, it certainly feels like it's been a minute since we've done this, doesn't it? Lads, laddies, and lovers, it's me, Waddles, and I would like to introduce you to the next Minecraft update. 1.20.60. Sit back and buckle in, because today we'll be talking about enchanting changes, farming changes, armadillos, trial chambers, and even more. This right here is everything in 1.20.60 that you need to know. Beginning with, beginning with a little bit of love, because you see, when a plant and a snow layer meet, sometimes if conditions are just right and they're happy enough, they may conjoin together in a process called snow logging. Oh, it's beautiful. Over here at this stunning snowy landscape for this one, snow logging is now going to work up better than ever before. At world generation, with all valid plants, a single snow layer will now be placed at the bottom of them, and making a snowy survival spawn make way more sense than ever before. Now, if it feels like this update began development about a million years ago, well, you're pretty much spot on with that one, because the very first 1.20.60 preview dropped all the way back in November of 2023. We're going to be diving into a big range of different kinds of updates. However, many of the updates inside of this update might go a little bit more under the radar. This is a little bit of a smaller update. However, however, this next update, if you are a true miner, it will not go under the radar. Lapis Lazuli Ore. How familiar are you with it? Quick, pop quiz. How much lapis can you get per lapis when mined? Think about it, think about it, keep thinking about it, and the answer, it has changed. Nine lapis on a maximum perfect condition. Nine pieces of lapis. We're not talking any enchantments at all. Nine pieces of lapis if you're lucky when you mine a single piece of lapis ore. Previously, it was only 8 to lapis, at least on Minecraft, the bedrock edition. Now, where you're really going to reap the benefits with this one is if you bring magic into the mix. With Fortune 3, instead of a maximum of 32 lapis now, potentially up to 36 lapis when mined with Fortune 3. If you thought the devs were generous with that one, though, oh, the generosity it continues. Because the Nether Gold Ore, I don't know really realistically who loves and craves this stuff, but the Nether Gold Ore, when you mine this stuff, the previous maximum was going to be up to 5 gold nuggets per mine. Now, that new maximum, in parity with Minecraft to Java, is going to be up to 6 gold nuggets per mine. If you're a connoisseur of the fortune enchantment with Nether Gold Ore, your new maximum is now going to be all the way up to 24 bumped up from 20. You know, moment of honesty, but the Wither Rose, this thing was added in like, what, 1.14 or something on Java, but I still, to this day, always forget about it. It's such a cool item, but it's like, how you get it is almost too difficult. I feel like it should be changed. Hey, well, speaking of change, the like button. If you have not tapped the like button, go ahead and change that really quick. Leaving a like on these videos helps me know that you like them and you want to see them continue indefinitely forever. If you don't leave a like, hey, well, that's fine. Maybe I'll just quit making videos next week. Anyways, the Wither Rose. Look at this right here. If you're familiar with the Rose, more familiar than me, then you would realize that maybe that's a little bit different. On a Bedrock Edition, the Wither Rose acted way slower before. Now it's going to deal damage way faster. I think previously it would deal a, a tick of damage every, like, two seconds or something like that. As you can see here, that's happened, like, instantaneously now. Commands, they're beautiful. You can do so many things with them, including using this brand new HUD command, hide different parts of your hotbar. So real quick, check this out. We got the hearts, we got the food, you know, everything like that. We're going to kick this off with HUD. Then we're going to set a target, which today is going to be me. After that, we can either reset things or we could hide things. If we type hide, then we get a list of different elements that could be invisible. For me today, I don't know, we'll say health, but do note real quick that you can hide other things too, like say the horse health or maybe the paper doll in the corner. But anyways, if we go ahead and say health, then run that command, just like that, I'm still in survival Minecraft and oh, 100%, you better believe it, we can still take damage for sure, but we just can't see our health. And even if we open the inventory, no health or no nothing like that at all. When you're done hiding different random elements of the HUD, to reset things, it's very straightforward. HUD, target, reset, and you're right back to normal. As a Java man, I'm a little bit envious here. I can't lie. Our next stop of the day sends us back over to the main menu. As you know, over a long period of time, slowly but surely, bits and pieces of Minecraft's menu system, they've been flipped, revamped, enticed, and enchanted. The pieces of the menu that have now undergone this clean UI overhaul it's increased in this update. Once you've created a world, if you go ahead and pause that world right here, and then go ahead and go to settings right there, it looks ancient. I always mess this up. Okay, however, back over on the main menu right here, if I say wanted to edit that world I'm recording in today, I tap that edit button. 
This screen is Brad's new refreshed and revamped. Yes, yes, that's right. The Edit World screen has now got that clean, fresh, revamped menu UI stuff. It's all pretty self-explanatory. The menu is very intuitive and easy to understand, so... I mean, dive into it if you want, but I feel like this thing really doesn't need much explanation. I suppose if you were curious previously, we were looking at a screen that looked, you know, a little bit something like this. If it doesn't auto-select it by default, you might need to just enable it. There should be a button somewhere near the top where you can enable the brand's new design. Who enchantments! It Unfortunately and tragically, I mean, what did you expect? There's not going to be a new enchantment in this update, but there are some big changes with the books. First things first, we kick it off with our old friend. Clearly, as you could tell by looking at that book just straight up, that's going to be the Silk Touch enchantment. Previously, the Silk Touch book worked kind of like Silk Touch would. You would be able to walk up to certain things in the game and just Silk Touch them. One of the things that you would have been able to Silk Touch before was the bee nest, actually. You could walk up to it with a Silk Touch book, Silk Touch him, and you just get the thing. The same with this beehive item right there if bees were inside of it. Another weird Silk Touch thing comes into play when we take the Silk Touch book and mine Frosted Ice, or in other words, ice created by Frostwalker. You would get water sources and it doesn't work like that anymore. The true sad one though, the tragic loss of a life, one of the greatest sadness of all time. I can barely even find the words, it involves Fortune 3. A Fortune 3 book previously, when you like, say, mine some crops or something, it would actually fortune those crops, and sadly, tragically, it's not working like that anymore. The Fortune 3 book, it does not have fortune on it, but it does have fortune on it, but it like doesn't have fortune on it, like in the sense of being practical and working and everything like that. If you, yeah, I muddy the water on that one, didn't I? But you know what I'm trying to say. The Fortune 3 book does not fortune anything anymore. Can we get one F in the comments for this one? It is tragic. No boy, how do we bounce back from that one? Ugh. Food. Everybody likes food. Eating. Eating inside of this update has been adjusted ever so slightly. And for big fans of suspicious stew food, I've got great news. Inside of this update, whether you're fully fed or not, you will now be able to eat suspicious stew in survival Minecraft. That's right, yes, yes. I'll say it again. You could have full hunger, and if you wanted to, you could still take that game and play the game of suspicious stew. Halfway through our big list today, oh boy, this next one is maybe the best single change inside of this update. The Trail of Ruins, a structure added to the game in Minecraft 1.20 last summer. At the midpoint of our list today, if you have been, say, savioring this ancient Minecraft structure for the moment that it has been fixed and polished beautifully, well, the savior no more, because look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. Those applause are so warranted. The Trail Ruin, since its addition to Minecraft Bedrock Edition way back when, about a year ago now, it has been bugged. There's been issues with the generation. Basically, the top part wouldn't be fully connected to the bottom parts, and now it properly is. The Trail Ruins is properly ruined. Uh, however, this does come with an asterisk. It does make some pretty weird world generations, too. The Trail Ruins, clearly right here, has created a... I don't even know what to call that. It's It's weird. The Trail Ruins generation is still a little buggy, okay? The big thing here, though, and it was a saga that we, like, pretty vividly followed for a little while here, is this top part. If you go over to the top part and you start digging down, when you continue digging down, you're going to, like, connect to the rest of the entire structure now. No more, like, 20-block disconnect or whatever you want to call it. That's pretty amazing. But I, I can't just be me. I, I'm not the only one that has forgotten about this structure, right? All right, look, I, I make these videos for you, for your entertainment, so you'll have something to watch while you eat. I don't know what you do. I make these videos for you. Usually, I'm your guy, and I tell you what's going on with these updates, but with this one, you're going to have to help me out. I think this is a relatively notable change. I just don't understand the change. The large chest and the large trap chest, their textures have been updated inside of this update. As a job, I mean, I'm not as familiar with these, so you take a deep, intense look at them, and maybe you spot the difference, but... I don't know. Now, speaking of updates, I don't like to, like, waste and clog up too much time with the technical updates, but uh, in the pursuit of showing you just about everything in the update, technical updates. There are so many scrolling through on screen right here. Bug fix updates. There are also so many fixes inside of this update. More specifically, about 88 different bug fixes come into the game 
in a Minecraft Bedrock 1.20.60. Minecraft is already a beautiful game, but one could definitely argue that the game gets ever so slightly more beautiful when played with friends. Aww. This next one goes out to all of the realms lovers out there. Unfortunately, I do not have a realm, so I can't exactly fully show it off to you, but it's a brand new thing called Realms Stories. Inside of the Realm Stories screen, you're going to be able to see a feed of a big gameplay moments that happen, a little bit of a timeline, a list of all your members, and it's basically all out an information hub for your realm. From the test footage that I've seen from various other creators, I believe maybe Echo Soldier had some footage of it, it looks good, really, really fire. And speaking of realms, another big update inside of this update that hits officially is Render Distance. Your view distance inside of a realm is now going to be farther than ever before, making things look more better. The default render distance inside of a realm is now going to be 20 chunks. That was beautiful. So Minecraft 1.20.60. So far, so good. Those are a lot of wonderful updates. This next chunk of updates that we'll be taking a look at are the experimental updates. That'll mean when creating a world inside of this update, if you want to dive into any of these next updates, you may need to slide into the experiments tab and actually enable some of this stuff. The two big ones that we're going to talk about are going to be update 1.21 and armadillo and wolf Arm. The first and one of the biggest ones that we're going to check out here is this little guy called the armadillo. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Except that's the thing. Inside of your game, once this update hits, it might look a little bit different. Functionally, it's basically the same though. The Armadillo is a brand new mob, a little bit of a timid mob, you could say, that you'll find spawning in this update only inside of the Savannah biome. But great news, once you hit the Savannah biome, it's not really the rarest thing in the world, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Now, once you find this thing, maybe try walking up to it with a brush. If you brush the Armadillo, a brand new item is gonna pop off of it called Armadillo Scoop. When you use a brush on the armadillo, quite a bit of durability is consumed, so maybe don't use your favorite brush in the world. Now, we're going to need to scoot with this armadillo and collect quite a few armadillo scoot if we want to actually be able to use it. Once we have, say, like six or more armadillo scoot over inside of the crafting table, one, two, three, boom, 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 just like that, and you get the wolf armor item. Inside of your update, this armadillo scoot will look slightly different, and same with the wolf armor. But just like with the armadillo friend, wherever you went off to, functionally, it is basically exactly the same. Here we have a sweet dog, my dear wolf friend. With this wolf armor and a tamed dog, I can walk up to the dog and equip the armor on the dog. And just like that, this dog has a little bit more protection. It's about as good as diamond or something. The next time you're out inside of your world adventuring with your sweet, sweet dog go and something tragic happens, if it has the armor on, hopefully it'll be safe. If you want to remove the armor, like get it back, you use a pair of shears. When you use the pair of shears to get your armor back, a tiny bit of durability will be consumed. Now these three updates, the armadillo, the scoot, and the armor, they're actually coming to Minecraft in one of the next major updates. For Minecraft Bedrock, it looks like that might end up being 1.20.70, but I suppose technically speaking, you never know. This stuff might end up taking longer to develop or what? Speaking of Minecraft 1.21, when I was taking a look at this update, doing a little bit of research for this video right here, I was shocked to find out that technically, if you're playing in the non-preview version of Minecraft Bedrock, the Trial Chambers, you've never been able to touch it and experience it up close and personal. So probably the easiest way to find the Trial Chambers once it's enabled in your world is with the help of the handy locate command. However, unlike on Minecraft to Java Edition where the structure is pretty common, this thing can be unfortunately kind of rare the trial chambers is a brand new underground structure you'll be able to find generating across your world usually the stuff is going to generate at or below y0 this structure is a multi-room dungeon combat challenge structure with different mobs to face and all now i don't like to assume but i'm gonna go ahead and assume that you've heard at least a little bit about the trial chambers so i'm not gonna go too hard on all of the info on it but long story short check this when i approach this thing in survival minecraft the trial thing lights up and then skeletons start to get spawned the big and noticeable difference between minecraft to bedrock and java here is the poison skeletons they don't actually have any poison or anything like that the trial spawner also seems to spawn mobs in a little bit more like a little bit slower all around the structure is really really cool and if you don't know much about it or you do i highly recommend checking out some of my other content that i've cooked up on the structure because it's seriously really really cool right now at this point this is the biggest part of minecraft 1.21 now alongside the brand new structure to pull all of this off we've got a brand new block called the trial spawner 
You're definitely not going to be able to get this thing in survival Minecraft. Instead, you'll just find it inside of this structure right here. But we're looking at three different categories of different types of mobs that can come from each trial spawner. Every single trial chamber will pick one mob from each category. So say stray, silverfish, and maybe husk. How it works here is pretty straightforward. When you find this thing inside of the structure, it'll be just kind of chilling here and not really doing too much. However, once you approach the thing in survival Minecraft and get close enough, it kind of lights up like that and the mobs begin to spawn. Now, speaking of mobs, we got another type of trial spawner called the Breeze Trial Spawner. The Breeze is Minecraft's newest mob coming to the game in 1.21. It's a dangerous mob. It likes to spit out wind balls. It's kind of scary. It doesn't have that much health, though, so a little bit of good news there. The Breeze right now is only going to be found inside of the Trial Chamber structure. A little bit of technique and strategy talk with the Breeze to charge the thing and overwhelm it by spamming your sword. Get this thing into a corner and it's really not going to be bad of a fight. With the Breeze, when it comes to this mob, it doesn't really deal very much damage either. So it really shouldn't be the worst thing in the world. The skeletons are probably worse. And last but not least, where I want to wrap things up today is with a brand new mysterious item called the Trial Key. For today, let's play a little game. We'll leave it on a cliffhanger. What in the world could it do? Oh, wait. Perhaps this video tells you what it could do. But not yet. Ah, interesting. Check it. Check it right now because for today, friends, that is it. Minecraft 1.20.60, the next big update. Check it out and enjoy it. I truly can't believe it. Looking back at it and how long, how much development kind of went into this update. Well, it's crazy. It's been a long journey. It's exciting to see it finally out. Out of everything that we checked out, what is your single favorite feature? You let me know down below. Tap a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And for extra content occasionally, become a channel member. Tap the join button. For early guide episodes, Patron game. Speaking of patrons, a huge thank you to my patrons. Archangel, Ground Crazy May, Medical Boom 6, Whoopi Louvers, Unipork, Bill W, Tanner B, Austin B, Andrew H, and Gabriel Y. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, Waddles. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.